Okay, so good morning everyone. I hope uh, everybody is okay. Okay, guys, you're also warm. So currently we have Pilana nine. We have a lot of participants so we just hope that uh, the participants will increase as we go along with our discussion. So our subject is called dynamics of rigid bodies. Uh, rigid bodies, but actually uh, we're only going to focus on particles because dynamics of particles along is uh, comprehensive now. And as you can see here, it's a workbook for the sense in you because this is a very special workbook. This does not follow the format of the school, and I intend this one here as uh, uh, I intend this one to be uh, available for sale in the market. That's why I love that sugar man. So, um, uh, Going back to the uh, of particles, although that is subject is dynamic of rigid bodies. So, um, four weeks, then exam, three weeks, then exam, and then four weeks, and then exam. So, before the tongue of Malaysia said to one of the weeks, okay, before is you know, midterm exam, not the final exam. Uh, first coverage for the midterm is all about kinematics. Uh, <laughs> motion the may uh, some three different axes that describe the motion of particles may mainly rectangular polar and normal tangential then we have also relative and absolute velocities it's all about kinematics on first and part and second part is my kinetics now meaning motion and force it involves non force and then also a little bit of energy then can include the moment momentum because momentum is also part of kinetics. So among the other topics that will be discussed, it's all about particles. Huh? Because as I've said, the particles alone pala, it's comprehensive ng ang discussion. Although ang prescribed by Chad yeah, is that the it's a rigid bodies, but realistically, it is impossible unless the increase in pace. Maybe someday, uh, it's possible to compress on subjects to us. It's both for distance, especially in students. So, um, that's for the introduction. Um, so regarding the uh, ato bilang being sent to na answer sheet. So the instruction to very simple lang. Uh, you have to print uh, those answer sheets na no, twenty eight copies, and you have to print them before this week ends because that is critical. Okay, print na to, na include na to ang date and time. So that is important. Ang any answer sheet na beyond just a specific na time na dapat i-print siya will not be uh, valid, will not be accepted as uh, answer sheet. So, and then controlled siya na 28 lang. So if mag sobra ka 29, 20, uh, 30, 31, uh, it will be known and it's because you know, each uh, answer sheet has a unique ID number. So every time you print it, um, the producer has a unique ID number. Okay? And then you have to sign the part sa signatory. Right? You have to pattern to. You have to sign using blue color in a ball pen to signify that it is indeed uh, unique and only has one copy. So the answer sheet uh, will be used for quizzes, for exams, uh, etc. So in Max philosophy, it should mean two uh, will be used per week. So 14 times to this 28. So but the instruction for that is simple. Lang. You have to sign that answer sheet, for example, for week one. And then um, the questions 
uh, for that quiz week, for that week. Um, and we'll be given a Google link. So before you can see the question in a Google link, you have to insert first the ID number of your answer sheet for that week. That is important because uh, at the end of the quiz, you have to upload your, uh, your quiz or exam by pictures or scan, whatever. And then you have to post not makita na da, from ano, makita na da sa answer sheet ang um, ID number to be in code. So it must be matched in the pending na naging night. And of course, ano to nga, uh, video recording will, will still be applied na. That you can choose to record uh, via webcam, via cell phone, or via external webcam. It's up to you. But um, during quiz or exam, it will not be live. Live lang yung mga uh, laptop or as a Zoom. But it's simple lang yung link. It's simple lang yung link. So it's up to you na. You will just, you will just be given, I think, at most 40 minutes to answer. Uh, so for example, you have a call. May laptop ko. So, we have to be laptop. Although, myself, I'm not going to be laptop. So, we have to be messenger, my Google form. Open the Google form. The report sa ng ID number sa akin na answer sheet. Include ko. Then, ma-reveal ang question. Then, copy and answer. Go to instruction. I work. I'm currently working on the instruction. So, copy and instruction. Then, it close ang laptop. Close each other when I have an answer to the answer sheet. And then after 40 minutes, um, you will take pictures of your answer sheets, then upload it to the same. That's the only time you can copy it. 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 You can after you upload your uh, your answer sheets, uh, you're also expected to upload your 40-minute recording video. So I suggest that the recording will be coming from your cell phone, but in the six data. It's not in the one. It's not live one. Okay, so I think that solves the problem. Mm. If you have questions, please do so in the chat box. So before um, any subject is only two point five hours. So uh, it was suggested to uh, into some time it's still much time. So it's now uh three point seven five hours, so eight fifty to twelve or something. So let me share my inclusion some my inclusion time. It's because so now. Uh, Pagmamay, it's not time to pay for it. It's not really in a um, pagka book. Uh, it's a big quiz. It will take uh, 30 minutes or 40 minutes. Then ang remaining uh, two hours or less. Hindi siya na four discussions and for many uh, sample problems. So I, I guess ang three minutes will be uh, sufficient enough for now. Okay, so um, I am still using non-premium accounts to Zoom, so expect that after 40 minutes, this will be uh, closed and then open up. Okay. So let's start to go. Um, for week one, um, uh, we'll talk about rectilinear kinematics. Uh, Rectilinear kinematics. I am not sure if I'm going to discuss static motion because I made up uh, some different uh, discrete uh, rectilinear kinematics. So let's proceed to the uh, rectilinear kinematics. What are the fundamental concepts regarding rectilinear kinematics and the kinematics of a particle? Okay, so um, dynamics it is a branch of mechanics, no? uh, which deals with uh, 
motion, motion of rigid or particles, while static shear field speed equilibrium, so uh, static equilibrium. So, unmoving yeah, statics and dynamic shear is all about motions. But there is static equilibrium, there is also dynamic equilibrium. Uh, in static equilibrium, yeah, the sum of forces equals to zero. So, dynamics. Um, I think there are two ways that you're connecting dynamic equilibrium. One is that you are moving in a straight line with constant motion. That is uh, an example of dynamic equilibrium. Um, because it does not require force to maintain that motion. Your, uh, an object is moving, uh, it is moving, uh, it is moving linearly uh, without accelerating, without decelerating, and without changing direction. That particular motion does not need force to maintain its motion, to maintain, to maintain its force. Uh, um, it requires motion lang. If gusto yung accelerate, second gusto yung decelerate, or gusto yung change direction. That is an example of dynamic equilibrium. This equilibrium is the forces if they are present, uh, sum up to zero. Now. But it is not linear. Wala siya motion. It has motion. And the circular, and circular, no constant, uniform circular motion. Um, it is not really dynamic equilibrium. Yes, wala siya nag accelerate Wala mag siya nag-accelerate. Constant ang iyang magnitude. But it is constantly changing direction. So, may natin isang force na nag-push siya yan towards the center. It's, it is not purely uh, dynamic equilibrium. But in some sense, it can be considered as dynamic equilibrium because yes, there are forces also. There are there, there is a force that is constantly pushing it towards the center, but it does not really move towards the center. Diba? The purpose thing is in our course is to change direction, but we are gonna change the radius of the curve. Radius um, rotation. So in some sense it can, it can be considered as dynamic equilibrium. Wrong pure radio dynamic equilibrium is a con uh linear motion. Because our linear motion, ang yung mga frame of reference is non-inertial, meaning wala yes, in the rate. Pero sa uniform circular motion, yung yung mga frame of reference is inertial. Um, and non-inertial, meaning yes, in the rate. Inertial, gali. Non-inertial, no. Ang frame of reference is wala yung accelerate. Ang inertial, yan, is may acceleration. Example, sa share na gilan sa chip gila. Gil gila mo kung gila. Di ba, ang mga kasaya, gila mo. Or gila mo. Wala nga isang force na present, pero mismo ang frame of reference, which is yung chip, ang maya ang nag-accelerate or nag-accelerate. So, kung i-magnify mo na siya, at kung i-i- Enlarge mo na ang tamang jeep, let's say, it's a tatak, 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 jeep. Such that hindi mo naman notice, ah, jeep na ginaginap kung kuha ko. Such that do, do ano siya, do press na siya. Gulpi siya, gulpi na, gulpi na, gulpi na, gulpi na, gulpi na, gulpi na, gulpi na. It's because nga, wala ako sa person, person. It's because nga, hindi mo yung frame of reference, ang nag-decelerate or nag-accelerate. So that is the, ano, inertia frame of reference. Okay, so um, first, let's focus on discussion on rectilinear kinematics, continuous motion. So let's define first the most important uh, concepts. It's our position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Uh, when we say position, uh, the difference with displacement is that position is a vector, the displacement is also a vector, but displacement here is the difference between positions. So, of course, we know already what is uh, distance, okay? 
distance is is finger. It is just in a good uh, length of um, space per time, say five meters, that is distance. While position is five meters from that with respect to what? Just position the five meters uh, to the right or five meters below. That is position. Position is vectors. Distance is uh, distance. But what about displacement? Displacement is very much related to position because displacement is a change in position. So, for example, we have a uh, simple uh, uniaxis. So this is the origin. Initially, this is the position of our, of our particle B. It's called B. So, initially, and this tends yeah, is X unit. No, X unit, but, but the position is X unit to the right of the origin. Let's say this is uh, X long, let's just call it X. That is the uh, it's distance. But if we would like to you know, refer to it as the position, but that may arrow that may, may it because position is vector. For example, the change finishes. Uh, that is just a distance, let's say this is, okay, this is, uh, Position X, initial position X. And then finally, the group should be sometimes let us say P prime. So the only distance is X prime now. It's hard to distinguish something, some some some, know, some X like X overall. It's because in the textbook, some position is always uh, involved with uh, case. Um, distance is normal of this, but I cannot write this one in the book. Can you can as hat or something? Maybe it's not a good thing. It's a bar or hat. Uh, it's a bar. Anyway, uh, the new position is this. It's x prime. So the final position is x prime, the initial position is x. The displacement is the difference between the positions. So the displacement, let's say, let's call that delta x, is that is the change in position, is equal to x prime minus x. These are factors, remember. So if you look on um, arrow, x prime, minus an arrow, x, I believe is the new domain, but still my direction is the other So initial, initial. I'm going to show on delta x because displacement is a vector, then it must be, it must have a direction. So this is our displacement. This is our initial defined positions. The absolute value of that x is equal to the distance. So I think uh, it is showing that. Uh, surprising because you have all uh, basically about this one. So I hope we're clear that. Let's go to velocity now. Velocity and speed. So first, you already know that speed is the magnitude of velocity. Speed is scalar, while velocity is vector. Vector means it has direction. It has speed and direction. That is velocity. Okay, but there are two kinds of velocity as well as acceleration. They include the velocity and acceleration. Acceleration and velocity, displacement, positions. Uh, these are the concepts that we're going to be dealing with for uh, the first four to six weeks. So it's important to really grasp the essence of this. Okay, so acceleration and velocity, let's focus our attention on velocity and acceleration. Um, velocity is, by definition, the rate of change of displacement. That is one possible definition. The rate of change of displacement. We have displacement, right? So, the rate automatically that is coming. And the change is the change with respect to time. The rate of change of displacement is velocity. We can have another definition, right? 
direct to change of position. Is that right? First definition is velocity is the rate of change of displacement. This is displacement. So much the signal will change in displacement. Mathematically, that is delta x over delta t. So, Alicia. But what about the rate of change of position? I, the rate of change. The rate of change of position, correct? Right? Change of position. Change of position is still displacement. Therefore, valid definition. While acceleration is, of course, the rate of change of velocity. Yeah. Another signal change in velocity of this acceleration. Actually, the definitionally, and we get proceed to get the rate of change of acceleration is jerk. The rate of change of jerk. We are available in pop. Major, my pop, my but uh, the type of velocity and acceleration we can deal with the physical mechanics, which is not very fast. So, uh, in the of the session, so mostly velocity and acceleration. Uh, not ready to some of the subatomic particles and six and six and some motion. Yeah, uh, oxidation is not enough to describe some motion. So, may have to some higher polygamy derivatives. Okay, so as I mentioned, you know, we have some two types of velocity and two types of acceleration. Uh, there is instantaneous velocity and average velocity. One, there is instantaneous acceleration and Average acceleration. So mathematically, ano yung ano yung ano yung ano yung ano yung displacement yung displacement is final position minus initial position. That is this. That is for kung mo to shut down it means wala na time. Um, so, velocity. Uh, velocity. We have two kinds: no? average velocity and instantaneous velocity. For uh, for average velocity, uh, we sub AVA. The notation for that is delta x divided by delta t. This is what's my data in delta automatic machine. So the person might be average. Any any just a bit delta guy. Automatic average. Why? Let's see later. While instantaneous velocity is um, delta x over delta t. There is difference here. Ang notation sa mga is to gamit delta x over delta t. Ang notation sa tulong niya is different siya, dx dt. Ang sa tulong, tawag siya instantaneous, instantaneous velocity. It's because like, this is the true velocity at any given instance. And ang yung notation is different siya, which means it is exact. Huh? It is not yet uh, a usable equation on the XD. If you have to, you have to process that eh, para to spit out sa some specific uh, equation for that type of behavior or motion. You define that eh, anong function, some velocity in terms of displacement, something like that. But there is some average velocity by definition, like in the video, change of x over change of t. Why is called average? It's, it's because the nature of delta. You see delta, that is changing, meaning it requires only two points, two data points, final and initial position, a final and initial. So you don't know the whole behavior of a system. All you have is the final and the initial, ignorant to the unknown and over in between. You have really no idea. So the best that you can do is to get the most out of two points in. So you connect them. You have to make the most of it. So I have uh, each final position, I have initial position, I have final time, I have initial time. Plug in. So that is the average velocity. That is not exact. But the more we say, we are going to values of delta x, we are going delta t. Then we increase the accuracy. So if you infinitely so small, then you are approaching the true value of velocity. Then we can close the differential. 
Next thing is your state. Okay. So remember this one. Now. Once you, you have only two states, final education state. Uh, what the, the, um, all you can do is to approximate this average velocity. If you have the exact function then, from, from this fundamental equation, which is V equals dx dt, then what you have is the true velocity at any given instance. This is the same with acceleration. We have uh, average acceleration equals to uh, delta V over delta E, while the instantaneous acceleration is dV dT. This is the, these are the two fundamental equations, the dynamics, V is plus dx dT and A is plus dV dT. But we can produce another a form of acceleration that, that is not another fundamental equation. That is another formula. It's not in P, it's not in VTX DT, meaning that it's a second derivative of position. Posi the X is position, not distance. Remember that. X is position, not distance. The second derivative of position, that is the uh, derivation and acceleration. And by chain rule formula, we can produce another equation. But again, one in a fundamental other forms are just derivative. So if we can divide this root one, then we can some dt it would also to a dx. So this result to a dx and b d. So I have 10 minutes left. So this is also very handy in some situations. But just remember uh, this equation comes from combining these two equations, which are among other two fundamental equations, V equals to dx dt and A equals to dv dt. There's another formula for average velocities aside from delta x over delta t. As a dominance of the uh, initial velocity or first point, uh, second velocity or the final point, divided by two. It is another formula if you have only two velocities. Remember, this is only valid for velocity. You cannot have another I know, similar form for acceleration, which is, for example, be, um, a plus a from divided by two. This will not work. Uh, if your peers in a kind of some of your try more, try more, you know, try more, I'm probably going to be patient. Yeah, in the shape of the other, now valid, it's a certain state, and it's a valid acceleration. Okay, so that's for the uh, concepts of displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Let's uh, come back with the Okay, so let's now go to the types of uh, motion by the types of motion. So for me, I can divide types of motion into three categories. Uh, first category, I think, constant motion. Constant motion, which just means that the velocity is unchanging, meaning V is constant. All types of motion that belong to this category, I call them category one. Second category is uniformly accelerated. Which means, by the words, the acceleration they are constant. Okay. These are the two most common types of motion that we can observe in everyday situation. Constant velocity, constant acceleration. And this is 
So because we can't perceive them as other types of motion. Eh? We can only say it's a bus, it's a little bus. So they can go, ooh, it's a little bus, ooh, it's a little bus. With constant emotions on the motor. Ini dasib, ini ginang. Wala ka, ang wala na nga itong words, because ang wala na nga itong mga perceive. Ang change, ang rate of change of acceleration is called jerk. Unless you can perceive those subtle na visual visual information, then pwede ka makasabi sa friends mo kung labay. Oh, the jerk. Diba? Hindi mo naman ba? It's because personally, you cannot perceive that now. Pwede ka naman ba? It's fantastic. Ito na ginawa. But we don't have any word for this guy when it changes acceleration. It's just like that. It's 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 like that. word that we're using for that is jerk. That's why I said, yeah, these are the two most common types of motion that we can observe easily and that we can talk about. The other type of category, which I call third category, is anything that does not belong to constant motion and uniformly oscillated motion. There are infinite types of motion. The most common common of constant motion or the uniformly accelerated motion. But uh, mathematically, um, there are infinite. So all types of motion, which is three, A is generally not viable. I don't have a full bit. I don't have uh, others now. I don't have other types of motion. So as long as you have acceleration that is not constant, meaning it is a function of time, it is a function of displacement, so we a is equal to x cubed plus x squared plus x, a is equal to t cubed plus 1, anything that is not constant. We belong to the third category of motion, which is an equation of motion is unique. Meaning, hindi mo siya nakikita sa category 1 sa category 2. And unlike this category 1 and 2, ang equations yung nagkaita ni Gidigan is familiar na siya nagkaita. Nakita niya na yung instant of constant of motion ng equation is just ano yun? TXTT. Hindi, pwede yan. I-drive niya siya kung anong equations ng motion for uniformly accelerated motion. Mo na projector mo siya na may may b g t squared plus p zero ano siya so once we once you can identify na which type of motion is ano bilang then all you have to do na lang yung historic all what form you have to use so once na identify mo kung saan motion is na therefore ang mga tama na equation yun for me accelerated motion is na so eh so ano yung gamit na equation ni other types of motion is so wala ko choice. I have to try again. And ang source sa ini, of course, ang balik ko dito dito sa panalang ko, which is diba naman, A is equals to dx dt and A is equals to db dt. So, ano na siya? Sa third category, you have to fabricate new equations. So, first and second, you have to recall new equations. Okay, so let's continue. Let's go for this of uh, constant motion. All right, um, case one. Uh, constant motion for B is plus constant. So, Start as a fundamental equation, which is V is equal to dx dt. V is equal to dx dt. All equations originate from these two. So, three to that now. So, so dx dt. So, E translate to dx plus to v dt. V is constant, remember. Therefore, we need to separate dt. 
cx is equals to b dt. Now we can choose to we can choose uh, uh, boundary conditions at time. We did start, start at t is sub zero and then t. Okay, it's up to you. We did have zero time, something like that. See, uh, know, and, uh, time start by is always zero. Right? So this would be x plus two b t on the condition that zero t okay then plus c do not forget um no, do not forget um, constant of integration we don't know what it has happened Uh, I have less than one minute, so must you are now done. Break the uh, one minute exactly or two minutes because after this, uh, we start to stop the okay. Uh, Thank you. 